Old Latin, Wikipedia article audio. Old Latin, also known as Early Latin or Archaic Latin, refers to the Latin language in the period before 75 BC, before the age of Classical Latin. In New and Contemporary Latin, it is called Prisca Latinitas rather than Vetus Latina, as Vetus Latina is used to refer to a set of biblical texts. Philological Constructs The Old Time Language The Four Latins of Isidore Old Latin Corpus Fragments and Inscriptions Works of Literature Script Orthography Phonology Stress Vowels and diphthongs Consonants Morphology Nouns First declension Second declension Third declension Fourth declension Fifth declension Personal pronouns Relative pronoun Verbs Old present and perfects The use of old, early, and archaic has been standard in publications of old Latin writings since at least the 18th century. The definition is not arbitrary, but the terms refer to writings with spelling conventions and word forms not generally found in works written under the Roman Empire. This article presents some of the major differences. Bibliography The earliest known specimen of the Latin language is from the Prenest fibula. A new analysis performed in 2011 declared it to be genuine beyond any reasonable doubt and dating from the Orientalizing period, in the first half of the 7th century BC. The concept of Old Latin is as old as the concept of Classical Latin, both dating to at least as early as the late Roman Republic. In that time period Cicero, along with others, noted that the language he used every day, presumably the upper-class city Latin, included lexical items and phrases that were heirlooms from a previous time, which he called verborum vetistus prisca, translated as the old age slash time of language. During the Classical period, Prisca Latinitas, Prisca Latina, and other idioms using the adjective always meant these remnants of a previous language, which, in the Roman philology, was taken to be much older in fact than it really was. Viri Priscus, old time men, were the population of Latium before the founding of Rome. In the late Latin period, when Classical Latin was behind them, the Latin and Greek-speaking grammarians were faced with multiple phases, or styles, within the language. Isidore of Seville reports a classification scheme that had come into existence in or before his time, the four Latins. They were Prisca, spoken before the founding of Rome, when Janus and Saturn ruled Latium, to which he dated the Carmen Salier, Latina, dated from the time of King Latinus, in which period he placed the laws of the Twelve Tables, Romana, essentially equal to Classical Latin, and Mixta, mixed Classical Latin and Vulgar Latin, which is known today as Late Latin. The scheme persisted with little change for some thousand years after Isidore. In 1874, John Wordsworth used this definition, by early Latin I understand Latin of the whole period of the Republic, which is separated very strikingly, both in tone and in outward form, from that of the Empire. Although the differences are striking and can be easily identified by Latin readers, they are not such as to cause a language barrier. Latin speakers of the Empire had no reported trouble understanding Old Latin, except for the few texts that must date from the time of the kings, 
mainly songs. Thus, the laws of the Twelve Tables from the early Republic were comprehensible, but the Carmen Salier, probably written under Numa Pompilius, was not entirely. An opinion concerning Old Latin, of a Roman man of letters in the Middle Republic, survives, the historian, Polybius, read the first treaty between Rome and Carthage, which he says dates from the consulship of Lucius Junius Brutus and Marcus Horatius, the first consuls after the expulsion of the kings. Knowledge of the early consuls is somewhat obscure, but Polybius also states that the treaty was formulated 28 years after Xerxes I crossed into Greece, that is, in 452 BC, about the time of the Decemviri when the constitution of the Roman Republic was being defined. Polybius says of the language of the treaty the ancient Roman language differs so much from the modern that it can only be partially made out, and that after much application by the most intelligent men. There is no sharp distinction between Old Latin, as it was spoken for most of the Republic, and Classical Latin, but the earlier grades into the later. The end of the Republic was too late a termination for compilers after Wordsworth, Charles Edwin Bennett said, early Latin is necessarily a somewhat vague term. Bell, De Loca TV in Prisca Latinitate 6 et Usu, Breslau, 1889, sets the later limit at 75 BC. A definite date is really impossible since archaic Latin does not terminate abruptly, but continues even down to imperial times. Bennett's own date of 100 BC did not prevail but rather Bell's 75 BC became the standard as expressed in the four-volume Loeb Library and other major compendia. Over the 377 years from 452 to 75 BC, Old Latin evolved from being partially comprehensible by classicists with study to being easily read by scholars. Old Latin authored works began in the 3rd century BC. These are complete or nearly complete works under their own name surviving as manuscripts copied from other manuscripts in whatever script was current at the time. In addition are fragments of works quoted in other authors. Numerous inscriptions placed by various methods on their original media survive just as they were except for the ravages of time. Some of these were copied from other inscriptions. No inscription can be earlier than the introduction of the Greek alphabet into Italy but none survive from that early date. The imprecision of archaeological dating makes it impossible to assign a year to any one inscription but the earliest survivals are probably from the 6th century BC. Some texts, however, that survive as fragments in the works of classical authors, had to have been composed earlier than the Republic, in the time of the monarchy. These are listed below. Notable Old Latin fragments with estimated dates include. The authors are as follows. Old Latin surviving in inscriptions is written in various forms of the Etruscan alphabet as it evolved into the Latin alphabet. The writing conventions varied by time and place until classical conventions prevailed. The works of authors in manuscript form were copied over into the scripts current in those later times. The original writing does not survive. Some differences between Old and Classical Latin were of spelling only, pronunciation is thought to be essentially as in Classical Latin. These differences did not necessarily run concurrently with each other and were not universal, that is, C was used for both C and G. Old Latin had a strong stress on the first syllable of a word until about 250 BC. All syllables other than the first were unstressed and were subjected to greater amounts of phonological weakening. Starting around that year, the classical Latin stress system began to develop. 
it passed through at least one intermediate stage, found in Plotus, in which the stress occurred on the fourth last syllable in four-syllable words with all short syllables. Most original Pi diphthongs were preserved in stressed syllables, including slash ai slash slash ei slash slash oi slash slash ou slash. The old Latin diphthong ei evolves in stages, ei. The intermediate sound was simply written e but must have been distinct from the normal long vowel because subsequently merged with while did not. It is generally thought that was a higher sound than e versus during the time when both sounds existed. Even after the original vowel slash ei slash had merged with, the old spelling ei continued to be used for a while, with the result that ei came to stand for and began to be used in the spelling of original occurrences of that did not evolve from ei. In unstressed syllables, asterisk oi and asterisk ai had already merged into ei by historic times. This eventually evolved to according to the process described above. Old Latin often had different short vowels than classical Latin, reflecting sound changes that had not yet taken place. For example, the very early Duenos inscription has the form Duenos good, later found as Duonos and still later Bonus. A countervailing change what we occurred around 150 BC in certain contexts, and many earlier forms are found. Old Latin frequently preserves original Pi thematic case endings OS and OM. Intervocalic slash S slash was preserved up through 350 BC or so, at which point it changed into slash R slash. This rhoticism had implications for declension, early classical Latin, honos, honoris, later classical honor, honoris. Some old Latin texts preserve slash s slash in this position, such as the Carmen Arvale s lases for lares. Later instances of single slash s slash between vowels are mostly due either to reduction of early slash s s slash after long vowels or diphthongs, borrowings, or late reconstructions. There are many unreduced clusters, e.g. iux mentum, Lasna duo knows bonus good, duis bis twice, duellum bellum war. Final slash d slash occurred in ablatives and in third person secondary verbs. Latin nouns are distinguished by grammatical case, with the termination, or suffix, determining its use in the sentence, subject, predicate, etc. A case for a given word is formed by suffixing a case ending to a part of the word common to all its cases called a stem. Stems are classified by their last letters as vowel or consonant. Vowel stems are formed by adding a suffix to a shorter and more ancient segment called a root. Consonant stems are the root. The combination of the last letter of the stem and the case ending often results in an ending also called a case ending or termination. For example, the stem pula receives a case ending m to form the accusative case pulum in which the termination m is evident. In classical Latin textbooks the declensions are named from the letter ending the stem or first, second, etc. to fifth. A declension may be illustrated by a paradigm, or a listing of all the cases of a typical word. This method is less frequently applied to Old Latin, and with less validity. In contrast to Classical Latin, Old Latin reflects the evolution of the language from an unknown hypothetical ancestor spoken in Latium. The endings are multiple. Their use depends on time and locality. Any paradigm selected would be subject to these constraints and if applied to the language universally would result in false constructs, hypothetical words not attested in the old Latin corpus. Nevertheless, the endings are illustrated below by quasi-classical paradigms. 
Alternative endings from different stages of development are given, but they may not be attested for the word of the paradigm. For example, in the second declension, asterisk Campo Fields is unattested, but Poplo Peoples is attested. The A stem declension. The stems of nouns of this declension usually end in A with Macron and are typically feminine. The Carmen Salier, the Prenest Fibula, the Forum Inscription, the Duenos Inscription, the Castor Pollux Dedication, the Garigliano Bowl, the Lapis Satricanus, the Preserved Fragments of the Laws of the Twelve Tables, the Tiber Pedestal, the Cypianum Elegia, Epitaph of Lucius Cornelius Scipio Barbatus, Epitaph of Lucius Cornelius Scipio, Epitaph of Publius Cornelius Scipio P.F.P.N. Africanus Lucius Levius Andronicus, Translator, Founder of Roman Drama, Nius Navius, Dramatist, Epic Poet, Titus Maxius Plautus, Dramatist, Composer of Comedies, Quintus Ennius, Poet, Marcus Pacuvius, Tragic Dramatist, Poet, Statius Cecilius, Comic Dramatist, Publius Tarentius Afer, Comic Dramatist, Quintus Fabius Pictor, Historian, Lucius Cincius Alimentus, Military Historian, Martius Porcius Cato, Generalist, Topical writer, Gaius Asilius, historian, Lucius Axius, tragic dramatist, philologist, Gaius. Lucilius, satirist, Quintus Ludatius Catulus, public officer, epigrammatist, Aulus Furius Antius, poet, Gaius Julius Caesar Strabo Vopiscus, public officer, tragic dramatist, Lucius Pomponius Bononiensis, comic dramatist, satirist, Lucius Cassius Hemina, historian, Lucius Calpurnius Piso Frugi, historian, Menius Manilius, public officer, jurist, Lucius Coelius Antipater, jurist, historian, Publius Sempronius Acelio, military officer, historian, Gaius Sempronius Tuditanus, Jurist, Lucius Afranius, Comic, Dramatist, Titus Albusius, Orator, Publius Rutilius Rufus, Jurist, Lucius Elius Stilo Precaninus, Philologist, Quintus Claudius Quadrigarius, Historian, Valerius Antius, Historian, Lucius Cornelius Cicena, Soldier, historian, Quintus Cornificius, rhetorician. Single for double consonants, Marcellus for Marcellus, double vowels for long vowels, era for ra, q for c before u, pecunia for pecunia, c for g, chaos for gaius. As mentioned above, the sound change ei leads to numerous variations including the reverse spelling ei4. This spelling eventually appears in the genitive singular as well, although is earliest in the true ending, cf populi Romania, of the Roman people, which both spellings in the same inscription, likewise, the sound change ossus and mommm affect the nominative and accusative singular, and the genitive plural, one very early text has genitive OCO rather than. This form also appears in the closely related Feliscan language, in the genitive plural, um survived in classical Latin words for coins and measures, otherwise it was eventually replaced by rum by analogy with first declension rum. Dot. The nominative slash vocative plural masculine EI comes from the Proto Indo European pronominal ending asterisk oi. The original ending oi appears in a late spelling in the word poplo in Sextus Pompeius Festus. The dative slash ablative slash locative plural eis comes from earlier ois, 
a merger of pi instrumental plural asterisk dashes and locative plural asterisk oishu. The form OIS appears in Sextus Pompeius Festus and a few early inscriptions, the Prenest fibula has date of singular numazi OI, representing Proto-Indo-European asterisk dash I dot, a number of provincial texts have nominative plural EIS, with an added S, by some sort of analogy with other declensions. Siller notes that this form appears in literature only in pronouns and suggests that inscriptional examples added to nouns may be artificial, in the vocative singular, some nouns lose the e but not necessarily the same as in classical Latin. The e alternates regularly with us, the locative was a separate case in Old Latin but gradually became reduced in function, and the locative singular form eventually merged with the genitive singular by regular sound change. In the plural, the locative was captured by the ablative case in all italic languages before Old Latin. A nominative case ending of s in a few masculines indicates the nominative singular case ending may have been originally s, pericitis for later pericita, but the s tended to get lost. In the nominative plural, replaced original s as in the genitive singular. In the genitive singular, the s was replaced with from the second declension, the resulting diphthong shortening to ai subsequently becoming ae. In a few cases the replacement did not take place, pater familis. Explanations of the late inscriptional es are speculative. In the genitive plural, the regular ending is a with macron sm but some nouns borrow om from the second declension. In the dative singular the final i is either long or short. The ending becomes ae, a ore. In the accusative singular, Latin regularly shortens a vowel before final m. In the ablative singular, d was regularly lost after a long vowel. In the dative and ablative plural, the obos descending from Indo-European asterisk bos is used for feminines only. Asterisk ACISS is adapted from OIS of the O declension. In the vocative singular, an original short emerged with the shortened A of the nominative. The locative case would not apply to such a meaning as Pula, so Roma, which is singular and Syracuse, which is plural, have been substituted. The locative plural has already merged with the EIS form of the ablative. The stems of the nouns of the O declension end in deriving from the O grade of Indo-European oblaut. Classical Latin evidences the development. Nouns of this declension are either masculine or neuter. Nominative singulars ending in ROS or RIS syncopate the ending, asterisk agros asterisk agris asterisk agers asterisk agar agar. Many alternative spellings occur. The consonant stem and I stem declension. This declension contains nouns that are masculine, feminine, and neuter. The stem ends in the root consonant except in the special case where it ends in I. The I stem, which is a vowel stem, partially fused with the consonant stem in the pre-Latin period and went further in Old Latin. I slash Y and U slash W can be treated either as consonants or as vowels, hence their classification as semi-vowels. Mixed stem declensions are partly like consonant stem and partly like I stem. Consonant stem declensions vary slightly depending on which consonant is root final, stop, r, n, s, etc. The paradigms below include a stop stem and an i stem. For the consonant declension, in the nominative singular, the s was affixed directly to the stem consonant, but the combination of the two consonants produced modified nominatives over the Old Latin period. The case appears in different stages of modification in different words diachronically. 
The Latin neuter form is the Indo-European nominative without stem ending, for example, cor asterisk cord heart. The genitive singular endings include is asterisk os. In the genitive plural, some forms appear to affix the case ending to the genitive singular rather than the stem, regerum asterisk regism. In the dative singular, succeeded e and after 200 BC. In the accusative singular, m asterisk dash after a consonant. In the ablative singular, the d was lost after 200 BC. In the dative and ablative plural, the early poets sometimes used bs. In the locative singular, the earliest form is like the dative but over the period assimilated to the ablative. The u-stem declension The stems of the nouns of the u-declension end in and are masculine, feminine and neuter. In addition there is a stem declension, which contains only a few isolated words, such as ss, pig, and is not presented here. The e-stem declension The fifth declension in Old Latin is almost morphologically identical to the one of Classical Latin. While the commonest ending in the nominative in both the singular and plural forms is s, there have been recorded a few instances of either a shortened e with the addition of a consonantal i, as in race or the abandonment of the nature of the e-stem declension. The genitive in the singular functions as the second declension, are. The genitive plural, in a like manner to the second declension, is formed primarily by sm. The dative is generally formed with an ei in the singular, and an bos in the plural. The accusative, like all the other declensions, retains the labial m, shortening the quantity of the theme vowel. The ablative singular is a predictable d dot. The plural is like the dative. The locative functions exactly in the singular as it does in the plural, with the short eis as the first although there are no singular-based city names in the singular besides the occasional Athensis. Personal pronouns are among the most common thing found in Old Latin inscriptions. In all three persons, the ablative singular ending is identical to the accusative singular. In Old Latin, the relative pronoun is also another common concept, especially in inscriptions. The forms are quite inconsistent and leave much to be reconstructed by scholars. There is little evidence of the inflection of Old Latin verb forms and the few surviving inscriptions hold many inconsistencies between forms. Therefore, the forms below are ones that are both proved by scholars through Old Latin inscriptions, and recreated by scholars based on other early Indo-European languages such as Greek and Italic dialects such as Oscan and Umbrian. Until 75 BC Old Latin 75 BC 200 AD, Classical Latin 200-900, Late Latin 900-1300, Medieval Latin 1300-1500, Renaissance Latin 1500-present, New Latin 1900-present Contemporary Latin